Record Breaks, Hidden Potential, a program that aims to unite and represent the Africa we want. My name is Daniela John. My first guest is Honorable Marius Franzman. He is the former South Africa Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. He's also the founder and chairperson of Mojo Multimedia and Tricontinental. The idea is about uniting Africa through creative education and awareness in the development of Africa. Where did it all begin for you? I think the, 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 there's a long background, but in a synopsis, um, I'm a child of my community. I grew, grew up in the community. I experienced the pain, the suffering, the issues and the impact of unemployment of our households, um, the reality of the impact of colonialism in our community, the fact that there was an attempt at genocide. Um, when we were children, children, we were told that in the Afrikaans books, we were told that if you speak the type of Afrikaans that the white Afrikaans speak, that it is superior, that's the proper language, it is the, the proper Afrikaans. If you speak the language of the person from the colored community, the Afrikaans, that is an inferior language. So if you say inferior language, the implication is speaking about the inferior person. Mm -hmm. So that's the way indoctrination in the psyche of our childhood has grown up. Mm -hmm. um, and the last few years before I parted, I was literally at high school and I've experienced that reality the way the education system tried to indoctrinate us as children, as young people. But yeah, it, it grew up of, out of the Catholic Church. I, I must say, before I was an activist in the political realm, I was an activist in my community in the church and, and the Catholic Welfare Department, the Catholic diocese that we belong to, was dealing with things globally. And that's a little bit the spirit of of togetherness, Ubuntu, international solidarity came from. And from there, I went into various political offices. Um, that great submission there from Honorable Marius Kranzman, uh, decolonizing um, our minds to empower um, Africans and people to become entrepreneurs and leaders. My name is Oliver Pochin Chikisaria. I'm the CEO and the president of the African Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. Our second guest for this episode is Mamrena Masoso. Uh, she's also an amazing woman. <laughs> she's also the CEO and the co-founder of Hitchat Entertainment as well as slash for I am a pop up, how do you call it? A pop up. Tip up. A tip up. Uh, so it's a music, dance, kind of township, dance and music. Yes. How did it all begin for you? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so basically, Richard was co-founded by three persons, just for clarity. Nicole Samuelson is a professor at the city, Nicole Lentrack and uh, Eric Cromwell. So upon their first visit, they're all Swedish nationals. And uh, upon the first visit, four or five years ago in Cape Town, two of them actually visited and explored townships. And that's basically at, at, at the point of really learning, you know, environment, the culture. They saw how youthful the township was. Uh, but while seeing the youthfulness um, of the township, but it was also impoverished, seeing the impoverishment of youth in the townships with very much um, scarce, really to no opportunities for youth to showcase their talents and um, also become better persons or besides even showcasing their talents to have the spaces where they can go for entertainment in a safe environment. So this is basically how the idea was born. So then Chad was born, uh, which I'm the CEO of, and um, the idea was to really identify this talent uh, from disadvantaged communities, develop and, and train them to become professional artists. And in that model, we are using what to call um, it, 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 it chart township pop. Um, it's called T pop for short. And this is where we kind of um, use this music, which is a fusion of really different genres. You find in one song a combination of Amapiano, Gong, you know, you name them, all different textures of, of, of local music you can find. 
That's fine. I think that's a great, a great, great submission there. And when you talk about, I think music is a sure way of bending emotion. And I always say without music, life would be in vain. But it was through music, we as Africans, that defines us, that bring us together. Because for without um, um, uniting as a continent, uh, we can't um, uh, develop. So thank you for, for the work that you're doing in bringing that confidence and empowering those communities by empowering the girls. Sounds like uh, Spice Girls of Africa, right? Eh? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Back to you, Uncle Maris Franzman. What, um, talk to us about the face of South African multimedia. What excites you about it? What are the challenges in the sector? Look, I think what we must say is that the media would be a very important communication tool. Um, we, we have this society currently that uh, is reliant on the internet. Um, but a, 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 a very big number of ordinary people uh, locked in rural communities, locked in townships, are not always able to, to, to have access to this internet. So, so we, we are moving from the past into this new future where there's 4 IR, this internet connectivity, and part of what modern media is doing is to connect the very big people to the very, very small people and vice versa. So, so our slogan in Moja is changing the narrative, disrupting the narrative, because the narrative is a Western narrative. The Western, the, the narrative is a narrative that says we must be A to Africa, that Africans can't do it ourselves, that um, there is devastation in our communities in Africa because of just the leaders. Now, I hold a different view. I believe that if there was not the influence of the West in Africa in the negativity, then you would not have seen the spiraling of proliferation of weaponry in the north of Africa. You would not have seen, for example, every time that there's either gold um, deposits or there is oil deposits being um, found, an exploration, then suddenly there is a scramble for those countries by the Western society and by business and entrepreneurs in the West and therefore the governments. And therefore we are saying that it's time for Africa to rise. Um, we've got these 54, five beautiful countries and the African Union has recently come up with the African trade agreement where we need to connect Africa, but we also need to look at southern and the various regions in Africa to say, how do people move easier? Um, and, and there is so many isms in our community that, that I think it is only but the correct disruptive narrative that can tell the story. So what Moja is doing is we, we are engaging people all over Africa, but also in the Latin America and Asia. So we think about South-South. If you look at Africa, Latin America and Asia, if you look at BRICS countries, at least 40% of the world population is in BRICS countries. Soon, hopefully, as other countries join BRICS, it will possibly be 60% of the world population and 60% of the GDP of the world. And hence, it is time for Africans to unite. It is time for Africans to say, but we can do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the stories in Ghana, there will be stories in Zimbabwe, there will be stories in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, and the story is somewhere in the Cape Flats. And if we can bring our people together, and that is what Moja is, is, is attempting to do. So Moja is as well the word that speaks about unity. So we talk about solidarity of the African people. But not in isolation, because Pan-Africanism is about the diaspora as well. The African diaspora, wherever in the globe they are. So if somebody has, it was Fidel Castro that said to the Cuban society that unless unless the Cuban um, population connect with an African identity, they cannot be a true Cuban. Now that's in Cuba. How much more the person that actually is from 10 years ago from Africa, um, and we're calling on the people in the diaspora, we're calling on people in, in, in Europe, in Asia, wherever they are, we're calling on them to say, let's connect and become proudly African again. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be back with Africa Bricks Hidden Potential. Welcome back to Africa Bricks Hidden Potential. 
A program that aims to unite and represent the African we want. We continue to interview our two special guests, and I'll be speaking to Honorable Marius Franzman. Honorable Marius, we are currently working with the African Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center, or the AIEC, to host the AIEC Global Trade and Investment Mission. How, and, and, and the mission is to, to support entrepreneurs. How has this partnership changed your outlook on entrepreneurship in this, in the, on the continent? Look, let me say that I must say as the CEO of that conference. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let me start off a little bit saying, well done. Thank you. Um, our people came through a ravaging situation of COVID. Um, we had a situation where the impact will still be felt for a very long time. That's the one. Soon after that, as people are starting to recover, we had launching. It has phenomenal impact in a negative way on small enterprise development. We, we are sitting in Africa with, a, with the reality of, of climate change. Climate change in the context of agriculture and agri-processing has serious impact. We, we are having the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. I don't call it Russian invasion because it's not Russian invasion. In fact, it was NATO that went to the steps of um, the borders of Russia that has provoked the situation where Russia had to defend its integrity. So, but there's that conflict. The impact of that conflict we're going to feel for years to come in the African um, development. And therefore, the, the way to deal with things, and this year we're having BRICS in South Africa, uh, and the chairpersonship of BRICS is kind of in South Africa. And the intent will be to look at how do we get not only governments and governments to meet and engage. The intention must be how do we put people to people together? How do we put in enterprise development together? There is models that's working all over. So in South Africa, with the small miners, we just came out of a mining in Dava. There was nothing on that in Dava that spoke on behalf of the small scale miner. Nothing. Because we in South Africa speak as if the, the people are Zamazamas. But these are people that in the Richterfeld area, in the Northern Cape, they actually stayed on those land and they were dispossessed by apartheid. And, and government has the audacity today to proclaim the people as Zamazamas. So, but if you are going to go to Ghana or you're going to go to Zimbabwe in Kwekwe, you're going to see that small informal miner owning that piece of land, owning the right and the paper. So, so, so one intervention I hope that we can find um, through the conference is, is a sector dealing with mining. Let's bring the mining houses of the entrepreneurs of the people, the villages in the other parts of Africa that actually own the land, they own the processing, but they don't have enough technology and funding to, in a sense, expand. So Africa on the other side has historically an exceptional wealth of mining expertise. And imagine if we can bring that together. So it has to be around the fun funding model, the, the type of business uh, positioning and propositioning. There's a risk involved in business, and as we know, one starts something this work and something else doesn't work, and therefore was consistent. And I think what the conference will be doing, and that's why we've decided to join the conference, is it will bring the best of different roles together. And, 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 and South Africa, for example, mining tourism. Tourism is a big thing. And we've seen now what COVID has done and the impact on tourism. We, we, this creative arts and creative industry, the, the creative industry, if we're able to tackle it wisely, that becomes such an important business development focus. And, and, and hence, enterprise development is about partnership. It's about learning from each other. It's learning from the mistake from each other so that when you make a mistake in your business and I'm learning from you, I don't need to make that same mistake. 
but I now can actually make another mistake that another interface can actually learn from. So, so that's how we see the conference, and I'm calling on South African business, big and small, um, to rise to the occasion and that we will support um, this initiative. And already I've spoken to some people in the fuel industry. They're very excited to go to conference, um, speaking to people in the fishing industry. They're very excited. In fact, this next few days I'll be going to, to Hope Bay because we hope that we can put um, CEOs of, 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 of the, the companies that will be visiting in Africa um, on, 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 on a yacht so that they can experience also the tourism nature of our, 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 our beauty um, in, 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 in the southern tip of Africa. Thank you so much, Honorable Maris. This is a very, very great important talk about the mining mining sector and one thing that I actually have liked that was the only positive thing that the mining endeavor was the uh, the the environmental impact to the social and the companies companies and combined as a mass for every mining. But we have to address the issue of the small mining as you have mentioned. We have other sectors such as manufacturing, you mentioned tourism, tourism that covers even agriculture, um agriculture start industry travel that can create create the much needed jobs that we need to develop Africa and to help can, uh, our people. Can I say on that, so important, and I hope that this conference will be a bit different to this mining in Dharma. And because whether it's mining in Dharma or any other, the reality is we cannot find other them. We can't find the same solutions for the same problems. Because what we have here is we're speaking big, but unemployment is persistent. 60% of the African youth in all of our African countries are unemployed and unemployable, but we have wonderful conferences. The, the trick here is how do we make this one different? And the way to make it different is to make it real. Um, we, we, we saw the reality of this trickle down effect. We make big deals somewhere in the top and we assume it will create jobs. It, we assume it will empower. It doesn't empower. So, so I do not, I'm not an agitator for trickle down effect on the economy, um, FDI and therefore by implication. So I hope that, and I can see the value of the way you package, the organizers are packaging the conference end of March to literally make it one that will deal with explicitly unemployment, inequality and poverty. In capacity building. I think we have to be very much intentional. I think there's so many events that are happening and they are not addressing the issue. So for us, we are different. We're not having the conference, as my wife likes to say, nice to have. We're having a conference to address the real issues, yeah. but also look beyond an activity. It's a conference and activity where we can come together, share knowledge, talk about investment. And as Africans, we're very much good at talking about uh, lack of implementation. So that's why we have to come together and address it. Um, mentioned the multimedia and creative industries, a very, very important part. When I was going uh, up, they told me, you know, don't become an actor, it's not a good job and stuff. That's a billion dollar industry. And it can build confidence and help with creating jobs um, in our community. And one of the, to sustain any business or any project, you have to have a unity, uh, even in the team. How do you manage? I'm going to ask you two questions quickly. How do you manage to run your operations as an entertainment? Because I know you rely mostly on funding and grant funding to be able to, to support the girls. How do you manage to stay focused and to do your operations as a team, united, focusing on the objectives? And the last one, how can we support? How can our people support yeah. what you guys are really doing? Thank you. That's very profound. I think it's very important to remain united and make sure that we are on the same page all the time. And uh, how do we get to do that? Of course, I work with a diverse group of, 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 of team members, but what is important is we share a common goal. And a common goal there is to make sure that the 4am succeed to become this number one tip of health and that Africa and the world has got to witness. Um, so, so while we are there, of course, everybody understands that their role is to contribute to the development and the success of YA. And this is really what we do. But how do we then get to achieve that is communication, number one. Uh, what I do is I normally have what to call daily check-ins with, with my support staff. And we normally have weekly meetings where we engage everyone on the development of the week, where we are at and where we are going. And that helps us to make sure that everybody is on par at every point. 
Um, so communication is key. Uh, making sure that you follow up and understand where your people are at. Uh, it is very key for us. And of course, um, as, as I said, it's a very dynamic group of, of, of persons who are in an Excel as a is a girl band of dynamic individuals, young women. It's a powerhouse of, of women. Uh, but I think what is very beautiful is that they're so united and they have become the sisterhood. Um, they're not competitors, they, they're a team. They're they, a they, they, they support, support, uh, they each, support other. each other and uh, they're really like sisters because since the first day they entered each other for training, first uh, of February 2021, we are now past two years since they've been together. So they've really grown to become a sister of track. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, they, they will be performing at the, at the conference as well. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, but you also highlighted and alluded to, to funding issue, how do we get supported? I think funding remains um, a bigger problem, especially in the uh, creative industry because you realize that uh, realizing revenue overnight it is really a difficult task, a mammoth task, because one, our target market are township youth. Remember, we are creating music by township for township. Um, but the consumers of this music actually don't really have the resources to really you know, consume our product because we have this musical digital plat platforms, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, and so on. And it costs them data to really go and access the music. Besides when you go on the ground and do you know, shows in the townships and so on. So that is another challenge that you don't really get to realize when you overnight. And uh, music industry is also very challenging. Everyone who knows in South Africa that it takes years for one to really get to where they want to be. So we look out for funding, we look for support, and uh, I think those are the things that really helps also this as a social, social project because it's all about empowering you from disadvantaged communities to become really the superstars, the pop stars, the professional artists okay. that we hope them to become. Yes. And I think they're really in a good trajectory and we and, see. Um, yeah, I think creative industry and as you say, lack of support, but I think it's something that the conference will definitely going to be addressing as well. So we have the conference from the 25th of March to the 31st of March is the ninth edition of the AIC Global Investment and Trade um, the Trade and Investment uh, Mission, which will address a number of different sectors. Uh, we have we have very intention about the outcome of the conference. So we have mining, we have tourism, we have manufacturing, infrastructure. Uh, development, oil and gas. Mostly, we're going to focus on the um, energy, and energy is one of the biggest challenges of Africa as well, and infrastructure. But we want to invite you wherever you are joining us from. If you want to level up or move it to the next level as a business, I think one thing we can learn from COVID 19 is how do we uh, collaborate, how do we build meaningful partnerships, and build uh, the hashtag um, Africa uh, that we want. Yes, so this is the end of our program today. Thank you for joining us. Our program today was a reflection of how Africa can empower itself from the dead so we can tap into our incredible potential. Thanks. See you next okay, Thank you. Just before we finish, just one minute, one minute to our guests. Uh, any last words for entrepreneurs out there? Okay, Bob, if you're an entrepreneur, if you didn't yet struggle, if you don't yet struggle to pay, the bolts. If you didn't yet struggle to, in fact, help uh, find ways of uh, empowering the laborers, then at that moment you're not yet dealing with the real issues of an entrepreneur. And hence, um, our, the, the key thing is let's bring entrepreneurs together, let's bring small business together, let's bring big business together, let's create that dialogue for people to learn from each other. And then we will create a better environment in business. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important as an entrepreneur out there to know that uh, investors from across the globe will be present at the conference that is the IC Trade Investment Mission in March. Um, you will learn from mentors, you will build networks, business partners for cross-border trade. Uh, you also get to learn 
on, on topics that are going to empower you as an entrepreneur in your business. So try and make sure that you're there. You don't want to miss this one. Thank you so very much. And I want to say thank you to Mojo Media and to Honorary Bomaris, Franz, and the team, and to the rest of the team. Thank you so much. Until next time.